everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, which you probably are. Happy New Year everyone, I hope this new year brings you joy and a lot of new adventures. This video is gonna be about my 2023 perfume favorites just to recap the year and unfortunately point out one flop. I have already talked about all of these perfumes at length on my channel, so I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. I'd like to start my list with an honorable mention, which is not a hair and body mist by Juliet Has a Gun. I'm inserting some old footage here because I recently used up the whole thing, so I don't have it anymore. Obviously it's a body spray, but this also just goes to show how much I loved using it. And the reason why I loved it is because it's the perfect thing to use when you don't want to smell too intense, but still want a pretty and likable scent that's really barely there. I actually have a whole review of this one up on my channel, which I'm gonna link here to avoid dwelling on this part of the video too much. Now that the honorable mention is out of the way, let's eat the frog or whatever the corporate baddies are saying these days. By the way, I love frogs and don't condone eating them, but let's cover the flop. The flop this time is unfortunately Fields at Nightfall from Zara. This one is supposed to be a dupe for This is Her by Zedig and Voltaire. My biggest issue with this one is that while the scent profile is very pretty, the opening is so sweet it's almost unbearable. This one doesn't have amazing longevity because it's Zara, and the fragrance itself is good and not overpowering in the fall and winter, however I find that the opening is so strong that I oftentimes don't even wanna go through with wearing. I'm gonna try to give it a chance again and hopefully I'll like it, but for now it's not my favorite. Let's get into the best part of the video. My favorite this summer was hands down Vanilla Vibes from Juliet Has a Gun. This one is perfectly warm and yet it's salty and sunscreeny, so it's a perfect outside fragrance. When you're out in the summer and you smell this coming off of you, the feeling is incredible. However, when it's extremely hot outside, like 30 degrees and up, I prefer something lighter and muskier, maybe with some citrus in it. You also absolutely have to wear this outside, because one time I wore this indoors just around the house and it almost killed me with how sweet it was. The next fragrance is something I've enjoyed recently, and it's one I haven't shown yet on my channel. This one is Exotic Blossom from Michael Kors. I don't know if you can see, but it has a pretty significant dent in this 30ml bottle. Part of it is from me, and part of it is because my sister-in-law actually initially gave this one to me, and she had used it for a little while. Anyways, this one is very fruity and floral. I know there is a general consensus on what fragrances go with each season, but I'm kind of backwards and I love my florals in winter. The notes listed on Fragrantica are mango, rose and musk, but I'm almost positive there is something more, I can totally see jasmine being in here. Anyway, this one is just a pretty and feminine scent, very comforting and nice. Basically, give me some rose and musk notes and I'm sold. The next fragrance is one I also have a review for up on my channel, which I'm gonna link here. It's obviously Skin by Clean Reserve, which I mentioned many times before and which was my absolute fave this winter. It's clean, as the name suggests, and yet pretty sweet and slightly sweaty, but in an attractive way if that makes sense. This one is the kind of fragrance I gravitate towards when I don't know what to wear because it has never let me down. Another fragrance that I loved at the end of this fall is Girl of Now by Illy Saab. This one is a super sweet fragrance, so I can't really handle this one in the warmer months. However, in the fall and winter, it's just simply addicting. It has this warm almondy component, which is slightly spicy and even a bit milky to me personally, which envelops you and smells gorgeous when it's cold outside. I swear there were a few weeks this fall when I wore this one non-stop every day and I didn't want to use anything else. And of course this list wouldn't be complete without my all-time favorite, Yes I Am by Cacherelle. This 50ml bottle is actually a new one, because this year I finished my 75ml bottle, which I had previously and it's actually the biggest size available. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but there is no other fragrance out there which is more me than this one. It's sweet, it's fruity, it's lactonic, it's warm and a bit spicy. It's everything I want it to be. So yeah, it's no surprise I'm on my fourth or like fifth bottle of this one. So that's it for my 2023 favorites. Let me know which fragrances you loved this year. I'd love to read your comments below. Anyway, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video in 2024.